Hi, I'm Dr. Lyndon Walker. The following video is part of my Skillshare course, Getting Started with R. Here behind me you can see the various different chapters of the Skillshare course. You can click on the link below the video to take you to the Skillshare course, and you'll be able to download the data that I use in this video and work along with it. In this section we will look at how to do an independent samples t-test, and how to do a basic linear regression using R functions. For each of these, uh, we will do a brief look at the interpretation, although this course is designed more around just learning R rather than dwelling too much on the statistical principles. Uh, and because of that, we won't be checking the assumptions or really diving into all of the things we would do with these statistical tests. We're just really looking at what code would I use to generate them, and then briefly we will interpret them. So the first thing we're going to do is a independent samples t-test where we compare the average weight of the athletes uh, between the two groups in the sex category. So the function we're using is t.test and the setup is actually a little bit similar to what we just saw with the box plot function. So we are using this data equals statement here data equals AIS data, uh, and so that know, that means that the function knows that whenever I'm talking about variables, uh, they are the ones within AIS data. Just saves on a little bit of typing. I could alternatively not do this and put AIS dollars on the front of each of these variables, and that would work exactly the same. So we then have weight and weight is being split by sex. So again, we have this little tilde sign, uh, which on a lot of keyboards is in the top left. Uh, if it's not, then a little bit of hunting, you should be able to spot it somewhere there on your keyboard. And so that's saying, let's, uh, let's compare weight by sex. For a t-test, remember, we can only have two different categories. We had more than two categories we'd need to use an analysis of variance. So let's run this and we're going to do a little bit of interpretation of the output. Uh, we're not going to go as deep as checking the assumptions of the t-test. Uh, I will leave that for a more statistics oriented course or video. Uh, so here we're just really looking at running these tests and there's a little bit more that we would do uh, if we were doing this for a piece of research or a project. So we've run our t-test. Uh, our key figures are here on this line where we have the t-value, the degrees of freedom, and the p-value. When p-values are very small, uh, and in fact any figures in R, when they are very small, they are provided in scientific notation. Uh, and so this little e is actually saying 10 to the power of. So this figure here, 2.2 e minus 16, 2 point, is actually 2.2 times 10 to the minus 16. So that's point zero zero, fifteen zeros, then the twos. So very, very small. Uh, and so that would tell me uh, that there is definitely a significant difference between the means of these two groups. Uh, if we come down to the bottom, uh, this function does give us the means. So these are the sample means, uh, just to remind ourselves, and so we see that the females' uh, average weight uh, is 67, and for the males' average weight is 82. Um, P-value tells me there is a significant difference, we also get the 95% confidence interval here. Uh, and so negative 18 and negative 11, uh, we always want to remind ourselves which way around the difference was. And we can see from this that it was the females minus the males because the females are lighter. And so that's saying that the females, are, we would expect that the population uh, mean difference to be somewhere between 11.9 and 18.4 kilograms. So on average females being between 11.9 and 18.4 kilograms lighter than males. So for our t-test that's pretty much it. Uh, we would check uh, some assumptions in terms of the standard deviations and the normality. 
uh, but that's getting a little bit statistical for this particular course uh, I will leave that for one where we really focus more on the statistics so let's move on and our second uh, piece of analysis we're going to look at is a regression model so the regression model that I'm going to do is modeling weight using height and lean body mass so we would expect that lean body mass is very highly correlated with weight uh, since lean body mass is basically your weight less your body fat uh, we would expect height to have some relationship as well um, possibly in fact very likely these two are correlated so uh, from a statistical point of view this is maybe not the smartest of models because we have two variables in here uh, two independent variables that are likely to be correlated with each other because someone who is taller is very likely to have higher lean body mass uh, but this is very much just as a demonstration so when we do a regression we use a function called lm so lm for linear model we use the tilde and we set up an equation so if we had more variables that we wanted to include in our regression we could just say plus 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 with more variables uh, again, we're using this uh, little data statement here rather than putting AIS data in the dollar sign on the front of each of these. That would work, but it's just a little bit messier. So what we're doing is we run the regression and the regression gets saved. Uh, and I've just called it fit model. This can be any name we like uh, as long as it's something we remember. Uh, and in fact, we could probably have been a little bit clearer with this naming. So I run this and we can see that it's produced this object called fit model and in fact when I dive inside a fit model this is a regression model it has a whole lot of different bits and pieces so it's got coefficients it's got residuals it's got effects it's got fitted values a whole lot of different bits and pieces uh, but what we want to do is we want to see a summary of it and very conveniently there is a function called summary uh, which will output the key bits of information not everything that's listed here uh, so for instance the residuals we might like to plot those later on um, and again that's starting to get a little bit more statistical than what we're doing here this is really just about using the code in R uh, but if we run summary on our fit model uh, we can see that it gives us a bit of output here uh, so it reminds us what our formula was uh, it gives us a little statement about residuals uh, and for those of you who are more familiar with regression we can see that the median is not zero it's negative 1.4 uh, minimum negative 6 but the maximum 18 so they from this uh, certainly at the edges are not symmetric uh, the first and third quartiles look a little bit better medians a little bit uh, away from zero so we will probably do some plotting and check up on this uh, if you are not familiar with regression uh, i would certainly recommend looking for a good introductory course it is something that i will be producing in the future uh, if we scroll down we have a table which has our regression coefficients and our p-values so if i want to create a regression equation so predicting weight I can go negative 8.7 plus this coefficient times height plus this coefficient times lean body mass and that will give me my regression prediction uh, my regression equation on the right hand end here I can look at my p-values so this column is my p-values and so we can see we have a smallish p-value 0.026 uh, for height uh, we can see another one of these scientific notation ones very small for lean body mass so both of these are significant predictors of our weight um, but certainly much smaller p-value R uh, will use asterisks uh, and in a very big regression table that will be really helpful for uh, being able to spot the ones with particularly the three stars uh, so the smaller the p-value the more stars that there are uh, to be able to spot all of the significant variables down the bottom here we've got uh, standard errors and multiple r squareds and the one that we would probably uh, look at before though others is the adjusted r squared 
So the adjusted R squared tells us about the percentage of variation in weight that is being predicted by height and lean body mass, and in this case, 0.868, so nearly 87%, uh, which is very high. From a technical point of view, there's probably some things wrong with this model, but just as an illustration, we can see that we would use this code to make a regression, we would use the summary function to produce an output table, and from here we can see our p-values, we can see our coefficients, and our adjusted r-squared, which are the things that we would normally be looking for in a regression model. Thanks for watching this video. Please like and subscribe to support more academic content for masters and PhD students who are embarking on their research journey. Also see below the video for links to our YouTube, Facebook community and Skillshare.